Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to share with you exactly how I configure my Mac terminal to take it from this to this. I do pretty much all of my software development work inside the terminal and this video is going to be the first out of three where I go through my entire setup and workflow. In today's video we're going to first lay the foundation by configuring the terminal itself and in the upcoming videos I'm going to share with you how I configure Vim to write and edit code inside the terminal and also how I set up Tmux to manage sessions, windows, and panes, which will take what we're doing today to a whole new level and complete the setup. Before we get started, I'll be running a lot of different specific commands to download and configure things, so I'll have a link in the description to a blog post you can reference where you can copy these commands and run them on your own machine and be able to follow along. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is open up a new terminal window and then run the following command to install Homebrew, which we'll be using as a package manager to download things to our machine. Now we'll hit enter. Now that we have Homebrew installed, what we wanna do is copy these commands and run them. I'll copy them one at a time and run each of them. This will add homebrew to our path so that we can use it. All right, there. I'm gonna clear this terminal window and then I'm gonna check if homebrew installed correctly by running brew dash dash version. All right, everything looks good. So we're actually not gonna be using the default Mac terminal. We're actually gonna use iTerm2, which I think is a lot better. So to install it, we're gonna do brew install cask iTerm2. So now we want to switch to iTerm2, so we'll let's close this window and then open up iTerm. All right, now that we have iTerm2 up and running, we want to make sure that we have git installed. To check, you can do git dash dash version. I have it installed, but if you don't, you can run brew install git. After that's done, we're now going to install OhMyZSH, which we're going to use to configure the terminal, make it look nice, and also add some plugins. To install it, we're going to run the following command. Remember that you can find this with the link in the description. Awesome, so things are looking a little bit nicer now. To take this a bit further, we're going to install PowerLevel 10K, which is a theme for OhMyZSH. To install it, we're going to run the following command. This will clone the repository from GitHub. So now that that's installed, we want to configure it as our theme. To do this, we have to open up the .zshrc file. It's going to be located in your home folder. I'm going to open it with vim. You can do this. You can open it with whichever editor you prefer. To open it up, I'm going to do vim tilde slash .zshrc. That'll open up the file. And then as you can see here, we have the zsh underscore theme variable. We want to change this Robbie Russell to power level 10K slash power level 10K. We're going to save those changes and then we're going to quit. Cool. To apply these changes, we have to do source tilde slash dot ZSHRC and that will open up the power level 10K configuration. I do want to use the Meslo nerd font. That's what I've been using. It's worked out pretty well for me. I'm going to do Y for yes, and then it's going to download the font. So after the font is downloaded, you actually have to quit iTerm. So to do this, you can do command Q, or you can go down to the dock and right click and then press quit. Because I know a lot of you might be using VS Code, I wanted to point out that once you change the font in the terminal, you'll also have to change it in the settings for VS Code's terminal by opening up the settings.json file and adding this line. So let's open up iTerm again. This is what you should be seeing now. If you don't, you can run p10k configure to open this up. It's asking if this icon looks like a diamond to make sure that the font installed correctly. It does, so I'll press the Y key and then I'll go through these. These all look good. It asks if these icons fit between the crosses. They do, so I'll press Y. I typically go for rainbow here, so three for the prompt style. For the character set, I use Unicode, so I'll press one. For the current time, I usually do 12 hour format, so I'll press the three key. For prompt separator, I do angled, so one for prompt 
heads, I usually do sharp, so one. For prompt tails, I do flat, so one again. For the prompt height, I usually do two lines, so I'll press the two key. And then for the prompt connection, I typically do solid, so I'll press three. For the prompt frame, I do full, so I'll press four here. For the connection and frame color, I do lightest, so one. And for the prompt spacing, I'll do two for sparse. I really like having the icons, so I'll press many icons with the two option and I'll keep these concise, so one. I generally don't enable the transient prompt, so N for no. And then I'll do the recommended option here verbose, so one. I wanna save these changes, so I'll press the Y key. Awesome. So now we have something that's looking really good. Typically, after I finish doing this, what I do is I open up the preferences to increase the font size on the terminal, um, we're, we're gonna go to profiles and then text and down here, I, you can change the terminal font size. I usually keep it between 18 or 20. After that's done, now we wanna customize the colors on the terminal. To do this, we're gonna go to the colors tab. I actually have a custom theme for my colors on the terminal, I called it Cool Night. I just wanted to call it something so I could share it with you guys. It's on GitHub, so to download it, all you have to do is run the following command. This will put it in your downloads folder. Again, you can find this in the link in the description. Let's run that. So that's gonna add the file to our downloads folder, and now we can import it into iTerm to use it as our theme. So we're gonna open up the preferences for iTerm. To do this, I can do command coma, and then we'll go to profiles and then colors. And down here in color presets, we're gonna hit the import and then we're gonna go to downloads and you'll see here coolnight.itermcolors. Let's open it up. So it should be imported now. As you can see, it's down here, cool night. Let's select it, awesome. So let's close preferences and now you can see this is the custom color theme I use. I really like it, but you can use a bunch of other themes. You can open the following website to find and install different themes. There are a lot of them. You can then import that theme to iTerm and then you can select it to apply it to your configuration. To enhance our experience a little bit further, we're gonna add some plugins. The first one is called ZSH-Auto Suggestions. To add it, we're gonna run the following command. Again, you can find this in the link in the description. And then I'll press enter to clone this repo. Now that we've cloned it, we wanna add it to the dot zshrc file. I'm gonna open it up with vim, so vim um, tilde slash dot zshrc. And then we're gonna look for plugins all right as you can see here we have plugins down here and we're we're gonna add zsh dash auto suggestions and then we're going to save and quit and now we're gonna reload that file so source slash dot zshrc and now we're gonna have auto suggestions enabled let's see if i do git, it's going to suggest the git clone command that we just ran. That's really nice about auto suggestions. It recognizes the things you've run in the past and then it suggests them to you. To apply a suggestion, you can hit the right arrow key and then you can run that command. The next plugin we're gonna add is called ZSH Syntax Highlighting. So we're gonna run another git clone. Let's execute that, and then after that, let's wait for that to finish. After that's done, we're gonna open up the Z ZSHRC file again, and then we're gonna add here csh-syntax highlighting, and then we're going to save and quit, source, the CSHRC file. So what this does is that it adds syntax highlighting to the commands we run like we do with code. So if I do something like CD documents, for example, it knows that documents is a directory I wanna to move to, so it underlines it, and then it highlights the CD with that green. The final plugin I wanna add is web search. Let's just open up the uh, ZSHRC file, and then we're just gonna add here web-search and then we're going to write and quit. Now that we added that, let's source C 
CSHRC. Now that we have that enabled, we can look things up in our browser from the terminal. So if I wanna look something up in Google, let's say I wanna learn more about ZSH, I can do Google ZSH and then press enter and it'll open up my browser with the Google search results, which is pretty awesome. And with that, we are finished. Thanks for sticking around to the end if you made it this far. We're gonna be adding Vim and Tmux to this configuration to take it to the next level in some upcoming videos. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or feedback for me. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video, it really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.